Now with all that taken care of, we do have enough time today for some actual theology. I'm going to repeat just a little bit from Monday's daily mass because we had basically the same gospel reading. Whoever loves me keeps my word. Whoever does not love me does not keep my word. Peter Kreeft reflected on this masterfully in his book, Letters to Jesus Answered, which my grandpa gave me as a confirmation present in 1999. And so he writes in the introduction, This book is written mainly for Christians, but not only for them. The point of the book is not whether or why you should accept Christ as the final authority, but what that acceptance entails. Not whether Christ is the last word, but how his word meets ours. Christians are people who believe that he is the last word. So when he answers a question, that's the answer. If you don't believe at least that, you don't have a dictionary right to call yourself a Christian. I love that. That is so eloquently phrased. If Jesus' answers aren't good enough for you, what will be? For the most part, people who don't accept the word of Christ probably don't respect the word of anyone besides themselves. And that's an intellectual dead end, because at that point, you're really just kind of talking to yourself. Now, it's true that many things in life do not come with obvious answers, even if you know every page of sacred scripture. For instance, Jesus does not directly tell us how exactly to care for the environment. We need to apply biblical truth to that issue as best as we can, and there is bound to be some disagreement. Welcome to the real world. But some matters in sacred scripture could not be stated more clearly. Love the Lord with all your heart and with all your strength. You cannot serve both God and money at the same time. Eventually, you'll pick one over the other. I am going ahead of you to prepare a place for you, and I will come back to you and take you to where I am, for in my Father's house there are many rooms. We have just enough time. I've got a cautionary tale about believing the word of Christ, and then we'll move on with Mass today. Back when I was at a Jewish Christian ecumenical conference, eh, 10 or 11 years ago, uh, I had a great time. It was awesome. It was lively, interesting, educational. Well, one guy there, a, a fellow Christian, um, he had been through some stuff. So his faith had just been battered by life. And he was, as they say, picking up the pieces. So he was one of those folks who, uh, who liked the wise teachings of Jesus, but he was too spiritually raw to really believe in things like the presence of Christ in the Eucharist or the resurrection of the dead. <laughs> and he would challenge our guest speakers on that. So uh, after a few minutes of back and forth conversation during the Q&A uh, portion, the speaker finally said to him, like, no, I'm not going to stand here and agree with you that the resurrection of the dead is an optional belief for Christians. I can't do that. And mind you, the speaker was as respectful as could be. He didn't belittle the guy's position. He probably realized he was dealing with someone who was hurting in less than obvious ways. But at the same time, he had the wisdom to maintain the doctrines of the faith which define him as a Christian in the first place. Is there or is there not a resurrection of the dead? The answer you get to that question is entirely dependent on whom you ask in the first place. But if you are a Christian, then the answer of Jesus is the only one that really matters. So is Christ's answer good enough for you?